Andy Padicom, the founder of Headspace, say that we can't always change what's happening around us, but we can change what happens within us. And let me tell you this, that every single human being, apart from those people who are mentally challenged or people who have a mental illness, but every single human being has the power to change whatever is happening within them. And there's someone who say that what happens before us or whatever, they are, have absolutely nothing as compared to what happens within us. Therefore, it is important for us to start thinking about this. In the episodes, we're talking about meditation and how it is connected to our success and how it is the most forgotten success inducing activity on the face of the earth. And we've been looking at how exactly can you use your time to do this meditation that I'm talking about. And we're looking at it, breaking it down brick by brick so that it can become productive, it can become rich and it become, can become quality. Today we add one more thing. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. You will agree with me that... Whoever say that everything is created twice <laughs> is actually on point. Everything you see was created twice. If you look around you today, anything you see around you was first of all in the invisible realm, in the world of imagination, in the world of dreams, probably even in the world of desires. Everything around you that you see, there is nothing that did not go through the two-step or maybe even three-step process of creation. My point in creation, in saying I'm talking about creation, is that there is in an imagination, there is thinking involved, there is the invisible involved, and then there is a process that comes up, and then there is the reality that comes out. If we are not going to start looking at the invisible world, the things that are inside of our spirits, things that are inside of our minds, Things that are inside of the divine's minds, by the way. You see, that is why meditation is important. Not only are we connecting with what is inside of us in the invisible realm. Let me tell you what happens with me when I am writing and even when I am speaking, by the way. Sometimes I come up with words or concepts or nuggets that I did not read anywhere, that I did not even have, I, I had not even thought about them. But they are drawn out of me as I am engaging myself in the art of either writing or the art of speaking. Thoughts come up and I, I get shocked when I review those thoughts, things that I've written or things that I've spoken. And actually I curate quotes around those things. What I'm saying is that there are some invisible things that are lying inside of us, within us. The quote is, what lies behind us and what lies before us, they are nothing as compared to what lies within us. What lies within us is the most powerful thing. And the question is, how often do we go within us, so to speak, in quote-unquote, how often do we go within us to find out what lies in there? How, do we go, how often do we go into the divine world to find out what is there? How often do we meditate? 
how often do we set aside some time to deliberately connect with the invisible world so we can download the things and we can engage in the process of creation you see creation is done more than once it's done more than twice actually people normally talk about it's it's done twice they say that there's a blueprint that is created and then the blueprint is given to an architect and the architect starts building and so on and so forth but you will be wrong because even before there is a blueprint there is a thought there is a thought process that goes before the blueprint is even come came up with before the blueprint is even written the blueprint is drawn there is a thought process that goes on my point is clearly that if we are not going to be thinking we are nipping the process of creation in the bud we are actually stopping the process of creation that is supposed to happen through us the man like macmanus told us avin macmanus in one of his book i think the last arrow he says that the bumble bee creates honey i don't know the whatever creates whatever but the human creates futures so if we are not going to imagine if we're not going to meditate we are not creating futures what happens is that we are looking at tomorrow as it comes you know the sun or the earth rotating around the sun on a, on a daily basis that's what happens nothing is changing but the human who stops all the traffic and decides to think decides to meditate that human is engaging in the process of creation the process of creation starts in the invisible realm and then turns into the physical realm and it is done through the process of meditation and there are very many things that are involved in meditation wrongly people think when you talk about meditation what are you saying you're talking about emptying your mind you're talking about the eastern mystic religions that's not what i'm i'm discussing in this episodes yeah, i'm not a teacher of meditation in the eastern world no i am talking about the exact word meditation what is meditation is basically re- ruminate it is think about these things and i told you some scriptures here joshua was told meditate on these things in other words there's got to be some input into your meditation it is not a free mind free space there's got to be some input and it is positive input it's not some things that you're worrying about it's the difference between worrying and meditating you're looking at possibilities and so on and so forth so the first thing we said that you need to do yesterday is to dream things that are yet to be things that have not become you dream and you visualize about them if you don't know how to do this you can start by and I, i've taught very many people about this and you know many many of them tell me that it's a problem for them to to meditate it's a problem for them to focus their minds and to dream and i normally say that it's one is because you've not been doing this for a long time it's a new thing it's a foreign thing and your brain has got to grow a muscle let me tell you there's a there's a, a concept in science actually called the grooves of thought in brain technology people who are in the brain they call it the grooves of thought that the moment you start putting some things into your mind there is a part of the brain that actually grows and it's allocated that particular activity for storage and for thinking and for retrieval therefore the guys who are meditating are improving their minds they're improving their brains and actually there's some there's a guys who there's some guys who say that meditation nourishes the mind in the same way food nourishes the body it is true food makes your body to grow and so on but meditation also helps your body to grow so one of the ways you can do this meditation is to through thinking i mean through meditation and through visualization and through dreaming and we say that if you cannot do it it's probably because you have not been doing it and the second thing is because probably you don't have an input have an input for example take a, a photo i used to take a photo of my microphone by the way and i put my microphone on uh, the the powerpoint you know and i would just gaze at it and i close my eyes and i imagine myself with a microphone before me speaking to a group of people and i would meditate ab- about that or meditate on that that is what meditation is all about if you want to build a house you take a photo of a house whichever it is you can even have an artist create for you that kind of a house and you just look at it and we said yesterday people don't do this because they think they've got to pay for the physical result 
Well, maybe you've got to pay for it, but it's not going to come unless you meditate and you think about it. So let us think, let us meditate about that. But today I want us to look at one more aspect that I've already discussed in some of these episodes. In fact, we had a long series about this. When you're coming to that place where you're setting yourself aside just to meditate, what do you do? Yesterday we said you do what? You dream, you visualize. Today we say you think. You think. You actively think. It's messy to think. It's not linear. Let me tell you. It's not linear to think. There's a guy who wrote a book called uh, How to Think Like Leonardo da Vinci. And he says that they got da Vinci's notebook at some point in time. And the book is not organized. Not the, the Da Vinci's notebook was not even organized. It was all over the place. The thinking is actually a messy thing. You, 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 an idea comes, you just put it down somewhere, you can think about it and so on. But at least at some point in time, learn to focus your thoughts in a linear fashion in a short spot of time. Not the whole day. Just in a maybe 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. The more you can do this, the guru you become. And you just do what you do nothing but think. It's more mental. This becomes more mental. The dreaming, yesterday we talked about the dreaming is a bit spiritual. It is a bit, you know, visualization. It's a bit of the invisible. But the thinking here, it is more mental. It is more head oriented than it is heart oriented. So thinking means that you take some time to gauge alternatives, to look at the whys, to look at the wherefores, to look at the hows, to consider alternatives, to consider something in 360 degrees in all the angles covered. You know, it means to take time to consider the and count the cost. Jesus Christ said that you cannot go to war if you have 10,000 guys and the guy who's coming up against you has 20,000 or 100,000, he says that you cannot start building a house until, unless you've considered the cost, you count the cost before you get started. This is what thinking is all about. You see, he said that if you want to build a house, by reference, if you have to put a, a, a massive project, take some time and calculate what it takes. This is what the thinking is all about. Do some calculations, some projections, have some numbers. You know, when you go to pitch for your business to you know, be bought or to be invested in, they would normally ask you about numbers. Those numbers come as a result of thinking. Probably those numbers are not even correct. And for the most part, those numbers are not necessarily correct. But just the fact that you've thought, it gives them confidence that you have owned the project. So thinking is important. Let us have some knowledge about the projection, the numbers, the quantities that are involved. This is what thinking does. So the reason why very many people will be many many people who will be your mentors, the reason as to why they avoid, you know, meeting you, they avoid investing in you, they avoid wanting to help you, is because they cannot see any fruit of your thinking about the thing that you're fronting. They don't want to meet prodigies because they they don't think for themselves. So if we can learn to think. The quality of what you are fronting increases. Get get a quiet place where you can think from. Make thinking a major habit and a serious business. Just like dreaming and visualization is. Dreaming is serious business. Thinking is also serious business. But how often do we do it? How often do we take pen and paper? How often do we jot things? How often do we journal things that have come? And by the way, things pass through the folder for thinking the input for thinking is ideas it passes through our minds on a daily basis daily basis and that is an opportunity for us to grab that thought and through the process of thinking start mapping it out start writing about it start drawing about it start you know planning about it start allocating resources start making phone calls on who can help and so on. This is what thinking does. And this is what successful people do. (laughs) They don't just, you know, let the day pass without them thinking. Let me tell you, the average human being has so much to think about on a daily basis. The average human being has very many ideas on a daily basis that float to their mind. Even those ones who are in dire circumstances, dire, you know, straits, we have so much to think about, but we don't. 
we have occupied our lives with so much activity that we're just covering time the other day i quoted someone who said uh, actually it's a it's a proverb in one of these ugandan communities that say that the sun today has taken so much time to go down this is a person who doesn't have something to do they are waiting for the sun to go down and now that we have been waiting for the sun to go down guess what we've invented very many things that help us to push the sun to go down we have series to watch we have movies to watch we have games to play things that do not engage the brain in thought and therefore we are doing ourselves great disservice because we cannot have the success that we need to have because we are not thinking tomorrow we're going to add one more thing about thinking but until then bye bye Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh clean and inspiring.